Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Luis Savito and welcome back to LGO Outdoors. Today we're going to be talking about a shotgun that I got in December as a graduation gift, uh, getting my master's degree at college. This gun that I'm going to show you is a Browning A5. A very good buddy of mine that's seen me grow up waterfowl hunting since I was four years old and I'm 24 now. Um, he was very big into Browning A5s and he called me up one day and told me, that he had a graduation gift for me. I didn't know what that meant. And he pulled up to my house and gifted me this gun. It is a stunning shotgun. This is a 12 gauge Browning A5 Magnum 12. The wood is immaculate. This gun, I believe, had maybe a box or two put through it before he handed it to me. I've already put my molar chokes in there. This is incredible. And he has kept it in the, in a like shotgun sock sleeve to keep it protected while it was in his gun safe. Beautiful engraving. So let's get into the details about it. This gun is, uh, I put it on the scale, it's about 8.8 .8 pounds. So definitely the heaviest shotgun that I have, but it's when you mount it, it feels amazing and it swings really smooth. You can handle just a little bit extra weight than your typical gun because my Beretta 400 or that I have and I uh, waterfowl with it, I think it's probably seven and a half pounds, maybe 7.8, you know, not too far off. You can see this butt pad, it still has some flex into it. That is a very good sign. When I see older guns with a butt pad similar to this, I always like to press down on it, see if they've gotten stiff already. But it has some give, so that'll help with recoil. The trigger pull is so light, I don't like dry fire shotguns. This gun's on safe, you can see red is dead, gun's on safe, and before y'all get mad at me, I always store my guns with the action closed, but I already verified, and y'all are going to verify for me, there's nothing in the action, nothing down below. Here's a trigger pull. That trigger pull feels better than most shotguns you'll see on the market. Let's see. Don't want to close this too rough. Browning A5. I really like the, the, the design of the older ones rather than the new ones. Um, the owner, or the previous owner, told me that they have synthetic stocks I could buy for this gun to help, uh, you know, so I can take the wood off and preserve it while using a synthetic stock and I won't have to worry about scratching up the wood. So definitely a possibility, but I also do love shooting this gun with just the wood stock. Uh, love these little grips. It reminds me of a beaver tail forearm on, um, and over and under, and I'm a huge fan of the Beaver Tail forearms, so this feels comfortable in the hands. This is also my very first 30 inch barrel shotgun. And this is chambered for two and three quarter and three inch. Uh, this is my first uh, strictly like three inch semi-automatic. Um, this gun is recoil operated. So when a shell fires, the barrel slides back into the receiver to operate the bolt. So it'll slide into the receiver, the bolt goes back, ejects the shell, another shell comes up, and in the process of that, the barrel comes back out, and then the shell and the bolt will follow, and it's ready to shoot again. But it's... Um, Definitely an interesting feel when 
uh, when you're shooting. Uh, that's one thing that people, uh, I've heard they don't really like that about this gun, is the way the recoil feels with the barrel moving around. They said it's too much recoil for them, or the gun's too heavy, or they just don't like the design because of when your head sits on the, uh, on the cheek piece and you're looking down over the top of the gun, they said it's a very uh, unique look down the gun. That's not for them, but I do like it. This gun was made in Japan, so the previous owner told me that he really likes the, the guns that are made in Japan because of the versatility when it comes to shooting different ammo. Um, the earlier ones, like the, the Belgian-made shotguns, can only handle stuff like tungsten, bismuth, or lead. These, uh, I don't remember exactly what they did inside the barrels, but they made it to where you could handle the option of steel shot as well, which I've already used this gun during waterfowl shooting steel shot, and it was just crushing birds left and right. I've already used a few different secret features to this gun for geese that have come over. Okay, guys, I have you on my head-mounted GoPro now. I uh, had to change out the, you know, the piece that holds the GoPro up. So, here's the A5. Uh, you can see it's on safe. Look, now it's on fire. Now it's on safe. And, once again, nothing in the gun. You can load this gun just like any other semi-automatic by putting around on the gun, hitting the button, right? This is a design where they have a speed load function in the gun. Let's say if you don't want to load it up like that, or if you if you have some birds that have come by already, or a flock of birds that came in the decoys, and you shot, you know, you got some birds down, you're on an empty gun, and let's say one of them's wounded, um, and getting away pretty quick, instead of dump it, dumping around in here, and hitting the button, you can put the shell in the bottom, and there you go, it's loaded up, as soon as you put it in, the speed load function takes from the bottom, put it in the top chamber, you're ready to go. And that's also useful for uh, if you have the gun uh, empty and a teal comes by. You know, teal, they like to swing or streak by the decoys real fast. Sometimes they'll sneak up on you. Boom. Have one in the chamber, you can take a shot at it. Now... We're gonna leave this shell and the gun. Let's say you have a magazine full of duck loads. Where I hunt, I run into more mostly ducks, so I'll usually run duck loads and have maybe a couple goose loads on the side, okay? Let's say if some geese are coming by pretty low and I only have three shot, you know, most people will use number twos on geese at the smallest I'm like oh man I need to find I need to get my uh, goose loads I hit this magazine cut off boom dump that shell and you see the bottom one didn't come up but I can get my goose load and load it up boom take my shot at, at a goose now, when you do that and your magazine cutoff is still set back or brought back, you only fire that one shot. Oh, I didn't rack it back hard enough. Hold on. There you go. It's still empty after I've just shot that goose load. Now, no more geese. Back to hunting waterfowl. I'm going to hit this magazine tube. When you flip it forward, it's gonna bring the shell from the bottom to the top. I already got a duck load uh, in the top chamber, ready to go. And just refill the 
bottom tube. And I've got a fully loaded gun ready to go. Those are my favorite features of this gun. Like I said, the trigger pull is amazing. The gun is just an absolutely great design. So to take this gun apart, you have to close that. You put your hand on the barrel and get a little pressure, pull it back. You have to make sure the barrel slides back into the action. Then you can take off the forearm and here is the spring you have to make sure the outside of that tube the spring slides on is oiled if the gun is struggling to operate that's mostly going to be your issue this gun when it was given to me had I believe only one of its chokes with it it was a uh, interchangeable modified choke tube it was a factory modified uh, Invector Plus thread pattern which I'm fine I don't need anything more open than a modified I grew up on a hunting waterfowl on a modified choke or a fixed modified pump action so I can do anything with that here is a couple of the friction rings that came with the gun these are the only ones that were given to me I would have to go to mid go online to Midwest and buy a whole set for about a hundred bucks if I wanted the whole thing the previous owner told me that I would need the whole setup so I can cycle the light loads but I told him I said that's fine I'm not too worried about it if I use or whenever I use this gun it's gonna be for waterfowl hunting this setup is ready to go for waterfowl uh, just make sure that spring is set in there properly and like I said put a little bit of oil on this tube to make sure it functions properly and just put a light coating of oil not too much just very little flat to flat and bevel to bevel and hopefully if they have the papers uh, in there that's easy to see My, some of it isn't here but it tells you how to set up your gun for three inch magnum loads and two and three quarter heavy loads or pretty much dove loads so here are the patterns that i did with the browning a5 out of the molar passion choke uh, which is the this one is the Invector Plus thread pattern it's Passing choke ideal for 30 to 45 yards Improved mod slash full so a light full Here is my promo code to save 10% if y'all are interested in checking out Muller choke tubes And you have a 60 day money back guarantee. So give it a shot if you have a little bit of extra money to spare. Here are my patterns I did with the gun. I did pace it out and use my range finder to make sure uh, that I was doing it properly. I patterned it with the most expensive shells I had just starting with that. Which are the Migras, they are two and three shot. This was 20 yards. This was 30 yards. And as you can see, this 40 yards was not that great, but I told this to the previous owner and he was there with me doing these patterning videos. And he also stated that it looked like I did pull to the right pretty bad. So you can see it's a little heavier in here. Only got a couple into the body, so I redid the shot at 40 yards, and it improved. Definitely didn't pull on that one. That would be a dead bird with all the body or hits in the body. It could be better. Now, let me compare it to the 
other shells I used to pattern it. There's the 30, there's the 40. And I also patterned it with Federal Speed Shock. There's 30 yards with the Federal Speed Shock. I didn't have enough paper to do the 20 yards, so I swim with these. And at 40 yards, the Federal Speed Shock definitely did a lot better. Let me know what you think. And if you want me to do an, a more in-depth video on this gun, like how to break it down, disassemble it, and stuff like that for proper cleaning, let me know. But in the meantime, this gun, I'm going to keep it ready for waterfowl hunting because it has got a lot of birds to kill. I'm so thankful for this shotgun. Uh, it shoots like a dream, points like a dream, and just so blessed to be able to be gifted a shotgun of this caliber. Alright guys, well I hope y'all enjoy. See y'all next time.